du? Uh, chapter 14. I need you here to take care of Arendelle. Hans felt on a small hand on his arm and heard her request, but for a few moments he barely registered either. His head felt fuzzy, as though it, like the kingdom around him, were filling up with snow. Hans still wasn't sure what had happened. One minute he and Anna were getting engaged in telling Elsa, and the next the sisters were airing some major grievances in front of everyone. Then, bam! Elsa was shooting ice out of her fingers. It was the craziest and scariest thing he had ever seen. He had just wanted to turn and run, but then Anna had stepped up and taken charge of the situation. She had stood up to the Duke and now had this great big plan to go after Elsa. It was, he admitted reluctantly, rather impressive, and if Anna couldn't find it within her to be strong in the face of something like this, Hans knew he had to as well. Who knows, he thought, some of his discomfort some of his discomfort fading as he began to try to think, think like Anna. Maybe this will work out better for me in the long run. Hans, with a start, Hans realized Anna was st staring up at him, waiting for an answer. She seemed desperate to be on her way. She kept looking over her shoulder at the cold mount mountains in, in the distance. He couldn't help wondering if she had any idea of the amount of power she was putting in his hands. Looking down into Anna's eyes, he finally nodded. On my honor, he answered. His voice quavered slightly as he said the words, and he hoped Anna would chalk it up to, to nerves, not, not excitement. <sighs> she didn't even notice. Letting on a visible sigh of relief, after all, the temperature was now well below freezing, she grabbed her cloak from Kai's outstretched hand and then hopped onto her horse. Turning, she addressed the crowd. I leave Prince Hans in charge. Instantly, <coughs> The gathered crowd began to murmur. He made, he made out a few confused Prince Hans and who's Prince Hans questions. He could hear others saying things like, the princess shouldn't leave now, and what will happen to us if she's gone? The thought gave Hans pause. He, he needed on it if he was going to pull off his plan. What if something happened to her? He reached up a hand and placed it on Anna's knee. Are you sure you can trust her? He asked. I don't want you getting hurt. And it was true. He didn't want to see Anna hurt. Elsa he didn't care about. In fact, Elsa's get, getting hurt or disappearing might just solve all his, all his problems. But Anna, everything hinged on Anna now. Everything. <sighs> She's my sister, Anna said. She would never hurt me. Then, snapping the reins, she turned her horse and galloped off. Hans watched as the pair grew smaller. It was foolish of her to go alone. Hans was sure that after years locked in the castle, she knew nothing about tracking people, and surely, surely she had little in the way of negotiating experience. And, and while Anna might not want to admit it, that was exactly what was going to happen when she finally found her sister, a negotiation, a give and take. I've spent years doing that with my brothers, Hans mused. But if Hans had gone, what good would, would that really have done? They might have both ended up lost in the snowy mountains, and then Arendelle would be left without a leader. Or worse, the people, in their fear and desperation, would turn to someone like uh, the Duke of Wesselton. No, staying behind was a thing to do. It was actually a blessing in disguise. With Anna and Elsa gone and Arendelle in crisis, Hans would have a ch chance to prove himself, to make the people love him. By the time Anna comes back, he vowed, I'll have everyone begging her to marry me. Composing his features, Hans turned to the crowd. People of Arendelle, he shouted into the wind. Princess Anna has put her faith in me, and now you must as well. I promise I'll do everything in my power to keep you safe. I don't want anyone to, wor to worry need need needlessly. I'm here for you. And for myself, he added silently. I might have bitten up more than I can chew, Hans thought a few hours later as he looked out over the courtyard. The situation was dire to say the least. A layer of solid ice covered everything, and the snow was still falling fast. The sky was a dull slate gray, the sun swallowed up completely, and it was growing darker by the minutes. In the port, Hans could hear the wood on the ship's hulls groaning with, with the growing pressure from the ice in the fjord. He knew it was only a matter of time before the ships would be reduced a little more than wreckage. And shortly after that, they'll probably become fuel for all these fires, Hans thought. Desperate for warmth of any kind, Arendelle's visitors were building fires over the courtyard. The problem was, was it was July. No one had anticipated bad weather, and kindling was scarce. It's only a matter of time before people start fighting over it, Hans thought with worry. 
He needed to do something. He had promised Donna and the people. But every time he made his way way off the castle steps into in, in, into the crowd, people grabbed at him, begged him to help, and asked him why this was happening. And he really had no answers. His bravado slipped away with each person he passed, and he began to question on his decision as well as his own bold words. Sighing, he turned and made his way back into the castle. Gerda and Kai were rushing about, trying to keep candles lit and fires blazing. But the wind was whipping, and for every fire that stayed lit, two burned out. Gerda, Hans called out. The older woman paused and looked over at him. <sighs> yes, sir, she asked, her voice weary. Hans opened his mouth to bark in order, but, but thought otherwise. He could tell Gerda was scared. It wouldn't do, do it to act, act like the bully. He needed to show her he was on her side. Are you okay? He asked. Is there anything I can do for you? Gerda looked surprised. I'm fine, sir, she said, giving giving him a sh quick, shy smile. We must carry on. It's what the princess and the queen would want. I just don't know, don't, don't know what to do is all. <sighs> you leave that to me, Hans replied. First things first. We need to make sure people are warm, right? She nodded, and he felt a surge of confidence. So I'll need an inventory of all the blankets we have, both in the castle and the stables. I don't need them to be clean. I just need them to be in one piece. Horse blankets, sir, Gerda said. Hans nodded. At this point, I don't think anyone cares, do you? I'll begin immediately, Gerda, Gerda turned to go. Wait, he called out. What else do you have to fight? What else do you have to, to fight the cold? There must be a storeroom of the royal family's winter clothes, no? Send someone to collect everything they can from there as well. Clothes, stoles, muffs, anything. <sighs> he paused as... As another idea came to him, and then let's go check out the Great Hall. We should be able to fit quite a few people in there. We can remove the furniture and then... Gerda nodded, her eyes wide, and the prince continued to rattle off a list of to-dos. Setting up cots, getting food from the pantry, providing toys for the young children to keep them distracted. Finally, noticing her look, Hans stopped and smiled sheepishly. Am I asking too much? He said. No, sir, she replied. Not at all. I was just thinking... Well, I was just thinking it is nice to have someone here to support the girls. It's been so long since the king... Her voice trailed off. Hans walked over and put a hand on her shoulder. Don't fret, Gerda, he said, giving it a squeeze. I'm here now. Yes, sir. Yes, you are. Gerda turned to go and then paused. I'll get going on the blankets first, Prince Hans. I'll find you as soon as we have some gathered. As Gerda shuffled, shuffled down the hallway, Hans let out a breath. This was more like it. He felt in control now. <sighs> he was going to get the Great Hall set up as a relief station for Arendelle's visitors and get them inside out of the elements. This day had comforted, w confirmed what Hans had always believed to be true. He would make an excellent king. <sighs> it didn't take long for Gerda to gather a, a, a large number of blankets and cloaks. Finding Hans in the library, writing lists of what still needed to be done, she gestured for him to join her. When he walked into the hall, he was shocked to see at least a dozen castle staff standing there, arms loaded down with blankets in various colors, sizes, and shapes. A few more held warm cloaks in their hands. It was, it was exactly what Hans had wanted. Good job, Gerda, he said. Gerda blushed at his praise. Now, let's start getting these outside and delivered and deliver to our guests. If you see children, be sure to get the warmest of, uh, 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 of the blankets, please. Same with the elderly. They will not be able to fight up the cold as well. As the staff began to head toward the main castle door, Hans looked over at Gerda. I'm going to go outside now, but I need you to stay here and work with Cook to get the soup and hot lock into the great hall. I'll start sending people in shortly. Turning, he followed the staff out of the door. It was time to show everyone the leader he could be, and would be, if they let him.